The Edge Impulse Python SDK is a powerful tool that allows you to quickly and easily interact with your models using the Edge Impulse system and all done through Python, which means you can programmatically set up entire machine learning operations pipelines. Right now, at release, the Python SDK only has two main functions. The first is to profile, which means you provide it a model, and it then profiles that model, which estimates the amount of RAM usage, the amount of ROM usage, and the predicted inference time for that model on the given target hardware. The second is when you deploy your model, and that means you provide it your model. Say you've got this model from Keras or TensorFlow or something that you've trained in another system, you send it through this Python SDK calling this deploy function and it spits out, say, a C++ library for you. And Edge Impulse supports a number of formats as your outputs. For example, pre-compiled firmware for a number of supported boards or specific libraries for AI accelerators. The SDK supports a number of input formats specifically the Keras format, the saved model format, where you can just pass it in a folder, uh, as well as Onyx, which means that in reality, you can convert a lot of different other formats into Onyx and then import that into the Python SDK. So for example, if you make something in PyTorch or Spark ML, a lot of those support conversions to Onyx, and then you can take that and import it into the Python SDK. Now, let's see how this whole thing works. I'm going to do everything in a very basic collab script here. And all I'm going to do is train a model on the MNIST handwritten digits data set. To start, I recommend installing a specific version of TensorFlow to make sure that this will work for you. So I'm going to use 2.12. And you're also going to need the Edge Impulse Python package. This is the Python SDK. It's just called Edge Impulse. So we're going to wait a moment while that installs. When it's done, we want to import those packages. So we're going to import Keras from TensorFlow, and we're going to import the Edge Impulse package, and we're going to call that EI. So we're going to run this cell, and that should import both of these packages. Next up, we need to set our API key. Notice the naming of this variable, and we're going to attach it to the EI object, which is really our module right here. Head to edgeimpulse.com and click Login. Create an account if you have not already done so, and let's create a new project. It really doesn't matter what we call this because we just need the API key from it. So I'm gonna create a new project and we're not gonna actually do anything with this project. We're just gonna to go to the dashboard, click keys. And from here, we're gonna double click on this API key and we're going to copy that. Even though it says dot, 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 it is copying the full key. So back in our collab as a string, we are going to paste that in here. We need to create a few more settings. Because this is MNIST and it's going to be handwritten digits, I'm going to create labels for those handwritten digits from zero to nine, and these are just gonna be strings. We'll need to know the number of classes. In this case, it's just the length of that array. And we're gonna set the file name for our downloaded C++ library. Next, we're gonna load that MNIST data. Keras happens to come with it, which is nice. We're just gonna load that data set. It will automatically split that data set between training and test. And the labels are just the digits zero through nine. They're integers. So the first thing we need to do is normalize that data so it's between zero and one. That helps things train a little faster and a little bit more accurately. We're also going to use this two categorical function, which creates a one hot encoding from those labels. And then we're going to get our input shape, which is going to be needed when we go to create our model. So we're going to take that from the very first sample in the training set. That's going to take just a second to load once we have that we can actually go ahead and build our model. For this model, we're gonna use a very simple dense neural network. It's going to first flatten all of those images because they come in two dimensional arrays. So we just want them as one dimensional arrays. We are going to create a hidden layer with 32 nodes. And then we're gonna create an output layer, which is just the number of nodes equal to the number of classes, in this case, 10. And then it goes to that soft max activation function so that we can get confidence scores for each of the actual labels. Then we're going to compile that model. We use the Atom Optimizer. We'll use categorical cross entropy for loss. And we're just going to watch accuracy as we train, not that we're going to really use those metrics. Finally, we're going to train the model. And we're only going to train it with five epochs. This is not going to create a very accurate model, but that's fine. We just want to demonstrate the idea of 
starting with a model, something that's been trained, so that we can then profile it. Note that you don't really need a trained model to profile because it's just the parameter numbers that change. The architecture stays the same. But also to deploy that model now that we have the trained model. So with the training done, we're going to evaluate on our test set, which is usually a good idea. We'll use that holdout test set with their labels, and we notice we get about 95, 96% accuracy, which is fine for this quick demo. In order to see which target devices are available to provide profiles, we should call this ei.model.listprofiledevices. This will spit out a list of strings. In this case, these are all the available devices, and of course, as Edge Impulse supports more boards and different types of hardware architecture, you will see more things added to this list. A very common one is to use one of these two Cortex. These are ARM chips, specifically the ARM Cortex M4 with FPU or floating point unit. And this is an M7, which is a fairly beefy processor for a microcontroller. Notice the M4 is running at 80 megahertz and the M7 is assumed to be running at 216. So obviously adjust the timing specs as needed. Say for example, you're running a Cortex M4 at 200 megahertz, it's gonna be a little bit faster. So now we can actually call that ei.model.profile function and we're gonna pass in our model which, as I mentioned, is any number of supported model formats. It could be a TensorFlow Lite, it could be TensorFlow or Keras, a saved model, or Onyx, and you can convert any other model you might create into, say, Onyx, as long as your system supports that. You can then call this profile or deploy functions. You notice here that we are using the Keras model. This is just a variable in RAM that we have created. This is the architecture. We compiled it, we trained it, and we even called a test on it or evaluate. So this model is just a variable. We're gonna pass that variable into this function as one of the parameters. And the other parameter is this Cortex M4-80 megahertz, which came from this list right here. So these are the acceptable arguments for that parameter. And this is a very common one. Note that this takes a little bit of time because it has to upload your model to the Edge Impulse servers. It will perform profiling there and it will send back the results which are stored in this profile object. And you can call dot summary to see it. You can also access any of the parameters in there if you just want to say get the numerical value of the estimated RAM. So you can use that as part of your training or experimental pipeline to make sure that your model is going to run on your desired hardware. When it's done, you should see the summary printed out. You should see the target hardware that we chose. You should see the estimated RAM and ROM on that target hardware. In addition, the arena size, which gives you an idea of how much memory might be used uh, for the actual computations. There is some overhead, as you can see here, because the Edge Impulse C++ library wraps up not just the model, but also some other functions to help you with, say, pre-processing or post-processing. If you don't want to use the TF Lite, engine, you can also use the Eon compiler, which does save you on some ROM and definitely on some RAM. And then there's also the estimated time per inference in number of milliseconds. So this very simple dense neural network should take about four milliseconds to run on a Cortex M4F at 80 megahertz. Once you are happy with the accuracy of your model and you think that it's going to run on your target hardware, using some of this information, we can go ahead and work on deployment. For this, we're going to call ei.model.listDeploymentTargets. This is going to list all of those possible deployments, much like we saw for the profile targets. These are your deployments, so it's a little bit different. Instead of a Cortex M4, we're just going to get a generic C++ library. There are other possibilities, such as pre-compiled firmware or things for AI accelerators here, whatever the supported list of boards. But worst case, you use a C++ library and it should run on just about any hardware, assuming you've got a compiler for it and you've got enough RAM and ROM. You can pass some model information to the deployment so that you can say, get those labels in your C++ library. To do that, we set those labels above in the settings as the digits zero through nine as strings. And we're just gonna pass that in as an argument to this output type. In this case, we're doing a classification task and we're gonna set those labels. And this is a wrapper really, just so we can pass some information to the deployment so that it can set some of those parameters for us in the C++ library. 
Next, we're gonna call that deploy method. We're gonna pass in model just like we did before. And we're gonna also pass in this model output type, this wrapper around some information for us. And finally, we're going to select the deploy target. In this case, we're gonna choose that zip string that we saw in the list above. That's going to output the generic C++ library for us. The return from this particular function is the actual bytes that we need to write to a file. And I'm gonna demonstrate that so that you can see how that works if you wanna name your own file. However, if you wanna let Edge Impulse name it, you could specify an output directory. For example, if I specified output directory as here, the current directory, it's just gonna download it and give it some arbitrary name. This is probably the way to go to save you a few lines of code, but if you wanna specifically name that output, for example, as part of a continuous deployment pipeline, you're probably best off doing it this way, where you just take those deploy bytes and you're gonna write them to a file. We'll check to make sure that we did indeed download those deploy bytes. We will open a file to write raw bytes to it, and then we're just gonna write them. This is a very classic way to do this in Python. Let's run that and we will wait a moment while the deployment method runs. Once again, it's gonna contact the Edge Impulse server, so you can't really do this without an internet connection. It will send it the model and the other information that we set, and it will download a C++ library for us. Let's give it a moment to complete. When it's done, you shouldn't see any output, but with no errors, that means we can look at our files, and sure enough, here is that .zip. Let's go ahead and download this. And if we take a look at our downloaded files, if we extract this, you can see it is indeed the C++ SDK for our trained model. If you open up the model variables, you can see that here are the labels that we set in our collab script. And by passing those to the deploy function, we can actually have them set inside of our C++ library that we can now access without having to name them manually. If you'd like to learn more about the Edge Impulse Python SDK, head to bit.ly slash ei dash pi sdk dash yt dash getting dash started. On this page, you will find a variety of tutorials to help you get started using the Python SDK, including the TensorFlow and Keras example we just did, along with some examples that include Hugging Face, Weights and Biases, and SageMaker Studio. I hope this helps you get started using the Edge Impulse Python SDK to programmatically create profiles and deploy your models to Edge devices. Stay tuned as we continue to add more features to this SDK in order to help you create your own Edge machine learning applications.